Okay, everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video review, and today we're going to be doing Batman The Cult. Take a look at this comic cover right here. Now, Batman The Cult is a story that I wasn't really necessarily too eager to get. It wasn't high on my list of trades to pick up. Actually, for a while, I wasn't going to buy the trade. Um, and the reason being, and spoiler alert, I know you guys hate it when I don't tell you spoilers are going to come up. But spoiler alert, one of the reasons is because Batman, kind of, in a way, kills someone in this. But I'll talk about that later. So, anyways, I kind of need to get the cult because I'm only maybe one or two trades away from having every single Batman trade in the modern continuity. So, I need to add it to my collection because, you guys know me, I'm a Batman fanatic. I need to have everything. So, the cult needs to be picked up. So anyways, with that said, let's actually get into the review of this story. See if it really wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be, or if it lifts and surpassed my expectations. And trust me, my expectations were right about in the middle, so we'll see how well this story did. Batman the Cult is a four-story miniseries, a four-issue miniseries, and it deals with Batman being captured by a charismatic individual named Deacon Blackfire. Now, see, at the start of this book, Batman has already been captured, and he's been starved, tortured, and fed drugs from Deacon Backfire for about a week, and he's been broken down in so many different ways, because you got to understand, he hasn't eaten, really, for a week, the bare minimum to keep someone alive. He has been tortured in some most heinous ways, brainwashed, and given drugs. So, Batman has kind of just broken down. Uh, and it's gotten so bad to the point that he has become brainwashed in the puppet of Deacon Blackfire. Now, let's talk a little bit about Deacon Blackfire. Deacon Blackfire is an individual that is shrouded in mystery because you never actually know what the deal is with Deacon Blackfire. Um, a lot of the stories that is told in this is that Deacon Blackfire is an individual that is so old, he goes back to the times of the pilgrims, and he, he, he's tried so many different ways to gain power, whether it's through uh, criminal activity, uh, politics, and eventually, of course, religion. Although, in the beginning of the book, you're not quite sure whether or not this stuff is true, but towards the end of the book, you kind of figure Deacon Blackfire is that old. However, you're not 100% sure, because, you know, throughout the book, it kind of feels like half the mumble-jumbo being told is just lies to confuse Batman, but then you get some hard evidence like records that Commissioner Gordon has. But whatever the case, Deacon Blackfire is a uh, very charismatic individual, and he's able to get his hands on Batman, and he wants to take control of Gotham itself. And he does so by taking control of Gotham's homeless and derelict, basically the, the, the untouchables of Gotham, for lack of a better term. And he either gives them the hypnotic drugs and uh, converts them over, or they willingly convert over. And he does his own brand of guerrilla warfare on Gotham. Now, back to Batman. Batman at this point has been broken down and has pretty much been brainwashed. He has no control over his body. He is pretty much not there. He's not even aware of where he is half the time. Eventually, and this is the part that I was talking about before with the spoiler, eventually uh, Batman is having a dream that he is shooting Two-Face. And Two-Face turns into Commissioner Gordon, and when the dream kind of surpasses, he finds himself in a room of dead bodies with a bunch of other people with guns shooting mafia people, and Batman is confused on exactly what happened. It's hinted at this point that Batman, while brainwashed and hypnotized, killed someone. Now, whether or not this case, and it pretty much seems to be the case, uh, I was a little uncomfortable with this, because Batman doesn't kill. I mean, even when it came down to Darkseid in Final Crisis, he didn't kill Darkseid. The Black Racer did, but the fact of the matter is, Batman doesn't kill. However, Batman in this wasn't quite in his full frame of mind. He had no control over his body. He didn't want to do it. It was just, he was brainwashed. So, I guess that can be allowed? I don't know. I'm still a little eh about it, but despite all this, Batman is still brainwashed. It takes the help of Jason Todd, who at this point is Robin, to free Batman from this brainwashedness and Batman to reclaim Gotham. And that's the basic gist of the story. So with that said, let's get into the good, the bad, and whether or not you should get it. Well, let's start off with the good, so that we get off on a good note. 
First is Jason Todd is in the story as Robin. Now, whether you like Jason Todd or not, it's the fact that there's only been around three trades with Jason Todd in him. Ten Nights of the Beast, The Cult, and Death in the Family. It's kind of nice to actually see Jason Todd as Robin. And again, whether you like him or you don't, it's nice to see him in there. I find it funny a lot, a lot of people hate Jason Todd, but most of those people haven't read anything with Jason Todd in it. Unless you pick up the individual issues, how the hell are you going to read anything with Jason Todd in it? But, whatever, that's besides the point. Jason Todd was very enjoyable in this. You can clearly tell it's Jason Todd because they say it's Jason Todd, but in addition to that, how the Robin acts a little bit more daredevilish, a little bit more edgy, but uh, with, that, uh, with that said, it's nice to have Jason Todd in the book. I like the art a lot. The art was... Although it wasn't great art, it really set the tone for the book. The darkness, the grittiness, the absolute hopelessness that comes with this book. So the art was actually very enjoyable. It, it kind of made me feel uncomfortable, which is something that I think they were aiming for. Another thing is that I like how Batman was broken down, and it really is not so much of a story about Batman breaking down and breaking down the Batman, but rather a story about... Batman coming back from such of a thing to really man up and realize that he's been broken down. You know, Batman's a very proud person, but he's not a very illogical person. At one point in the book, he kind of sits down and says, Bruce, you were broken. You were destroyed. Man up. Deal with it. Move on. And that's the case. And lastly, Deacon Blackfire is a pretty cool character. It's a shame that not enough was done with him. I mean, you can kind of figure what happens at the end, but... Um, you don't see Deacon Blackfire after this, and I would have liked to seen a little bit more done with him, but, um, hey, you can only get what they give you, so, what kind of saying is that? They only give you what you, what can you expect? How about that? Is that better? So, that's another good. Downside. Um, one is obviously the Batman killing people thing. Don't feel comfortable with that at all. Uh, second thing is, uh, Really, this story, although it's edgy, and I want to say they say controversial on the back, I don't, I don't know about that, but although it's very edgy, it doesn't feel as though it really stands out in my mind as something that's good. And I think the reason why cult is praised so much is because it takes Batman in a direction that's so different and is kind of edgy, but the story itself isn't anything that's overwhelmingly great. Um... And saying that, it doesn't mean it's overwhelmingly bad. The story is good, mediocre, average, it, it, nothing special about it. It's just more or less, well, okay, there's obviously something special about it. It's an edgy a story that takes Batman in a different direction. It's just more or less the fact that the story wasn't anything, it wasn't written well in comparison to some of the other Batman stories. So, with that said, the story is just kind of mediocre. But besides that, there wasn't too many bad about this story. Whether or not you should pick it up. Despite the good outweighing the bad, I would actually say no. And the only reason why I say no is because the price is nineteen ninety nine. That's a lot. This is like a $14 book at best. Um, if you were to pick it up, I'd pick it up mainly for... Um, maybe the edginess of the artwork and the fact that Jason Todd's in it. Now, this is coming from someone that is a Jason Todd fan, but put that aside and say Jason Todd, I did not like Jason Todd, I would still say pick this up because there's very little stuff with Jason Todd in it. Uh, on the whole, it's okay. You you won't feel bad if you buy it, but it wasn't anything impressive. Uh, I know one website, I forget what website it is, put this as one of the top 15 Batman stories of all time. I wouldn't put it there. But then again, what do I know? I only buy Batman comics in the dozens. So, uh, again, the cult, nothing overwhelmingly special. If you buy it, you're probably not going to feel that bad buying it, but I would recommend avoiding it. Unless you want to add uh, more and more Batman stuff to your collection like I do, then go right ahead. So, with that said, I'm going to end this review here. This is Andrew saying peace out for now.